even called for termination of the United States Supreme, the, the, the supreme land of our nation, the United States Constitution. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? Man, oh man, the long anticipating interview with Kamala Harris featuring her emotional support VP here, Jazz Hands Timmy, has finally came on CNN. Man. And I see why CNN and Dana Bash interview her because we all see that Kamala is not a heavyweight. She's a mental midget. It's no wonder the DNC has put her under the basement and hide her because she is pretty bad. This was an hour long, an hour long interview and CNN edited it down to 18 minutes. Now, CNN put live here, which was not live. It was tape. And out of those 18 minutes, Dana Bash talked about five minutes. Timmy here, he talked about five minutes. And that gave Kamala about seven to eight minutes of rambling. It's got to be that bad that out of an hour, an hour long interview, this is the best you got. 18 minutes. And it was bad. It's so bad that J.D. Vance gave us a synopsis of what the interview looked like. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and I believe that they should uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The first question off the bat, Dana asks, what are you going to do on the first day? And she says this. If you are elected, what would you do on day one in the White House? Well, there are a number of things. I will tell you, first and foremost, one of my highest priorities is to do what we can to support and strengthen the middle class. Um, when I look at the aspirations, the goals, the ambitions of the American people. I think that um, people are ready for a new way forward um, in a way that generations of Americans have been fueled by, by hope and by optimism. I think, sadly, in the last decade, um, we have had in the former president someone who has really been pushing an agenda and in an environment that is about diminishing um, the character and the strength of who we are as Americans, uh, really dividing our nation. And I think people are ready to turn the page on that. So what would you do day one? Day one, it's going to be about, one, implementing my plan for what I call an opportunity economy. I've already laid out a number of um, proposals in that regard, which include what we're going to do to bring down um, the cost of everyday goods, what we're going to do to invest in America's small businesses, what we're going to do to invest in families, for example, extending the child tax credit 
to $6,000 for families for the first year of their child's life to help them buy a car seat, to help them buy baby clothes, a crib. Um, there's the work that we're going to do that is about investing in the American family around affordable housing, a big issue in our country right now. So there are a number of things on day one. My goodness, alive. You even had notes. You could tell she was reading something right off the first question. Man, they gave you the questions beforehand. You came with your motion of support. You're reading cue cards. They edited it, and you still, still fumbled the bag. What is going on here? The next question was about fracking, and let's take a listen. Uh, energy is a big one. When you were in Congress, you supported the Green New Deal. And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, sure. particularly in your must-win state of Pennsylvania. Sure. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. In 2019, I believe, uh, in a town hall, you said you were asked, would you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking on your first day in office? And you said, there's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yes. So it changed in, the, in that campaign? In 2020, I made very clear where I stand. We are in 2024, and I've not changed that position, nor will I going forward. I kept my word, and I will keep my word. <laughs> She's a little slickster. She's a little slickster. Her values have not changed. She's been saying that from the beginning. Because 2019, she says this. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. You know, the, we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. I think about this issue through the lens of my baby nieces, who are one and a half and three years old. And when I look at those babies... And I think about what the world will be like in 20 years if we don't act. I'm really afraid. And as it relates to those Republicans in Congress, where I've now been for two and a half years, every one of those members need to look at the babies, the grandbabies in their life, and then look in the mirror and ask themselves, why have they failed to act? 2024, she says this. And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, sure. particularly in your must-win state of Pennsylvania. Sure. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. But in 2020, which you kept talking about the debate in 2020, she says, this. Joe Biden will not end fracking. He has been very clear about that. I will repeat, and the American people know, that Joe Biden will not ban fracking. As a VP, as Biden's VP, Biden said that he's not going to stop fracking, so she support Biden. But her values have not changed. Let's be clear. My values have not changed. You know what she did there? Now, Dana turned to Mr. Jazz Hands Timmy over here and asked him about his credibility, and he says this. The, the idea that you said that you were in war. Yeah. Did you misspeak, as the campaign has said? Yeah, I said we were talking about, in this case, this was after a school shooting, the ideas of carrying these weapons of war. And uh, my wife, the English teacher, told my grammar is not always correct. But again, if it's not this, it's an attack on my children for showing love for me or it's an attack on my dog grammar you want to blame this on grammar now guys if you've been watching me for over a year now i be talking with bad grammar everybody knows this i'm hood as f i be having the bad grammar okay i be having runoff sentences i be doing this ain't that timmy you said it in perfect english but we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. You carried weapons of mass destruction. That's perfect English. But that was a lie. When you talk about your rank, you said it in perfect English. 
Tell him I'm a school teacher, I'm a retired sergeant major. Uh, as a 24-year veteran of the Army National Guard and a retired command sergeant major. As a retired sergeant major in the Army National Guard out of Minnesota. Uh, retired out as command sergeant major. I spent 24 years in the military, uh, Congressman, as a command sergeant major. I don't... Because you are a public school teacher, right? Maybe that explains it all. You probably do have bad grammar, shit. <laughs> but you said it in perfect English. I am a retired command sergeant major in the Minnesota National Guard. Uh, I am a retired uh, sergeant major in the Army National Guard. What I consider to be the responsibility and the privilege of being the highest ranking enlisted personnel uh, ever to serve in Congress. And I'm the, oh, the Democrat. What, what rank was that? Command sergeant major. Uh, that was a lie. But you want to say it was bad grammar? You must think we stupid. You must think we stupid. Now, this question here goes to out to all you pro-blackity blackies, you uh, people that believe that Kamala is black because she went to HBCU and she pledged AKA. Dana Bash asks her this. Um, I was a little bit surprised. People might be surprised to hear that you have never interacted with him, met him face to face. Mm -hmm. That's going to change soon. But what I want to ask you about is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes, mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity. Yeah. Any same old tired playbook. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. No comment. Next question. Right? She just overlooked it. Didn't want to even address it. None of it. Right? If you're so pro-black, if you're proud to be black, she would have said it. But we know how that's going to turn out. Man, oh man. So there you go, black folks. That's your, that's your sister. That's your queen over there representing you. Man, what a hot mess. Man, imagine if they released the 40 other minutes that they've been edited out. It would have been a whole train wreck, a whole dumpster fire on a highway. <laughs> but they ain't going to do it because they try to protect her. Good job for you, Dana Bash, because you already know that she's a mental midget and you couldn't push back on her. There's an old saying that you're as good as your opponent. Dana Bash is a professional. She could go against like people like J.D. Vance and get the little back and forth. She could push against J.D. Vance because J.D. Vance is articulate. He's a deep thinker. And if you want to keep pressing, he's going to give you some more answers. You try to get the gotchas. You can press as hard as you can, but he's going to give you some good answers. Jada Bash sees that this person here, Kamala, is like debating a high schooler. So she don't want to go and slap around a retard. That look, that look bad on her. So this is why Dana Bash did not do some hard follow-up questions, especially now, because there's still 60 days. If Dana Bash had pressed any harder, she would have folded like a cheap suit and it would have been a disaster for her. So Dana Bash had to play nice and hands off because, again, you don't want to beat up a retard. It looks bad on you if you beat up a retard child, right? So anyway, it was a good debate. The more she talks, her poll numbers go down. I love it. I'm here for it. If you guys got any value out my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell Kamala I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you knuckleheads, get your ass off my lawn.